What's up, Mortal Suckers? <laughs> so I do have some of these new 2023 released designer fragrances in my collection. I know. I know, I know, I know. I've talked um, a lot and said a lot of negative things about the redundancy of the fragrances, but I did purchase some of them. As I told you guys last week, I think I have up to seven of them now, so I just want to kind of put them in order. Um, the ones that I like. All right? Let's talk about it. YouTube was good, man. It's Darren the Bowtie Fragrance Guy, the Fashion and Fragrance Channel, man. If you're into fashion and fragrance, subscribe to the channel, man. Make sure you hit that bell icon as well, so that way when you upload new content, you'll get notified. So we're going to be talking about a uh, new 2023 uh, newly released design of fragrances. So, you know, like I said, I won't, you know, go through over and over and uh, continue to, <laughs> uh, you know, talk about my displeasure, I guess you would say. Uh, with the redundancy of these new designer fragrances, okay? Look, it is what it is at this point, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon, so it is what it is. I just want to talk about the ones that I've acquired in my collection. I'm going to put them in order from best to worst. Now, with that being said, I will say this again up front. None of these fragrances smell bad, man. That, that's not what we're talking about here. But there are some nuances about um, these fragrances that you know, I feel, you know, in my humble opinion, have made some better than others. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So if you want to see how I rank them, then you know the routine, man. Keep it locked right here. We're about to jump right into it. Let's get it. The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we are back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's jump right into the video. So in the uh, seventh spot, because I only have seven of them here. Again, let me let me be clear. This fragrance smells good, okay? But I'll tell you why it's in the seventh spot. This one is from the house of Paco Rabanne, and this is One Million Royal. Now, being clear, this is my favorite bottle. I love that red hit here with the gold one right here on the bottle. I love the presentation on this fragrance. It is my favorite presentation. And again, it doesn't smell bad. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. But this one to me, after the opening of the fragrance about maybe an hour, an hour or so in, starts to fall a little bit flat for me. And that's why it is in the seventh spot on this list. It is a, the opening is beautiful. Um, like I've become accustomed to fragrances from Paco Rabanne, that one million lineage of fragrances, all of them smell fantastic. Um, the one million, the original, of course, the elixir, the parfum, you know, all these different one millions, of course, um, lucky, all of them smell amazing in the opening. This one smells great. You have this combination of uh, tangerine and I think cardamom is in here as well. After the opening, man, the more it starts to dry down, you get this kind of aromatic lavender in here as well, which I do pick that up. And then it starts to fall kind of a little bit flat for me. Um, get a bit of a vanillic sweetness. I think this coming from like an amber accord in here. You pick that up. I don't get much of the patchouli in the dry down. I do get that woody, that woodiness from the cedar, but again, it starts to fall a little bit flat. Now, I've been seeing there is a big... Uh, discrepancy or as it relates to performance. I get average performance out of it, but I will say that oddly with a 1 million release, when you see the note breakdown and you see patchouli, you see amber, uh, you see cedar, you would think it would perform a little bit better. I get about five and a half hours out of it. I would expect a little bit better performance. So again, maybe some small hits against the fragrance, I guess you would say, but for those reasons, I would put it in the seventh spot. Again, it smells great in the opening, but again, for me, it just starts to fall a little bit flat as it starts to dry down. So it gets the seventh spot, oddly and odd to me, because I thought this would have probably been one of my favorites, but it gets the seventh spot for those reasons. And again, this one is from the house of Paco Rabanne, and this is one million royal. All right, guys, now coming in and the sixth spot, we have Invictus Victory Elixir. Invictus Victory Elixir. Again, I really like the bottom on this. I love that black at the top. It kind of changes to that nice blue hue of blue at the bottom or the base of the bottle. Really like the presentation on this. Um, 
This is in the six spot. Again, it smells great. I don't want to sound like a broken record. All these fragrances really smell good. Um, you know my issue with them, so I won't get into that in this video. But this is in the six spot because it reminds me so much of uh, Jean Paul Gaultier Le Beau. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Le Parfum, I think it is. I think. <laughs> I don't know. There's so many, again, so many, you know, flankers, man. I can't remember. I think that's the name of it. I'll just make sure I put the bottle up here. But it reminds me a lot of that fragrance. You get this kind of tropical vibe almost of coconut, although this is not coconut, but there's a, you know, this kind of fruity uh, vibe up top. Maybe that's the orbitum, how the orbitum is coming off in this fragrance. And then you have this vanilla, ambery dry down. Again, it reminds me a lot of uh that fragrance so that's why it's in the six spot for me because again that fragrance just came out last year and then this comes out on the tail end of that and it smells really similar to that fragrance you know so again that's if i'm rationalizing how i would rank these that's why it's in the six spot but again it smells good if you don't have uh lebeau uh le parfum or parfum whatever it is if you don't have that one then this is definitely gonna be a good pickup and i think again this is really to me Although a lot of the other Invictus fragrances are more spring, summer, maybe signature scent. This is more of a fall, winter kind of fragrance as well. And it was released in the earlier parts of the year when it was getting warm. So I think that threw me a little bit too. But anyway, the sixth spot goes to this, Invictus Victory Elixir. All right, guys, and in the fifth spot, <laughs> this fragrance comes from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. And this is Y Eau de Parfum Intense. <laughs> Listen. That's one of the reasons I hate talking about these designer fragrances now because I get so confused on the names because they're so similar. You got Intense, EDP Intense. You got Parfum, Le Parfum. You have EDT, EDP, Eau de Parfum. It confuses the heck out of me, all right? <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that it happens to. So this is the EDP Intense version of YSLY. I've done a video about this whole lineage of fragrances fragrances if you missed it i will make sure i link it to this video but this fragrance right here man why sell why eau de parfum intense all right why sell why eau de parfum intense now again i said it in that video if you have any of the other fragrances from the ysl y line this to me renders this almost unnecessary as far as a pickup now it's in the fifth spot just because all the fragrances from that line smell great all right so it smells phenomenal and just based on the scent and dna alone i put it in the fifth spot but if you have the le parfum uh, of course if you have the original eau de parfum i mean you don't really need this one but it does smell great that's why it's in the fifth spot from ysl this is called y eau de parfum intense Guys, now coming in at the fourth spot, we have a fragrance from the house of Givenchy, and this fragrance is called Gentleman Society. Gentleman Society. Now, this fragrance comes from the lineage of, of course, the Givenchy Gentleman line of fragrances, and this is in the fourth spot because it smells good. Um, there was a little bit of creativity with this one as far as what notes they use to come up with this fragrance DNA, all right? It opens up with a kind of spicy, sweet cardamom you have some narcissus in here it kind of comes off like tobacco a little bit in the fragrance it mixes well with the you know sweeter spicier notes uh in this fragrance get a lot of vetiver in here and on the dry down i love the fact that they use palo santo which is one of those soft woody notes kind of similar to sandalwood it kind of in my opinion serves the same purpose almost as sandalwood kind of softens smooths out uh fragrances and that's exactly what the palo santo did in this fragrance it really really smells good you know, of course, at the end of the day, there are some fragrances that it reminds me of. It kind of goes in that direction. Of, like I said before in my previous videos of some of those Zaro Wanted kind of fragrances, it kind of puts me in the mindset of those a little bit. But again, it does smell good. And I do give some points for uh, some of the notes that they use here that uh, was a little bit atypical for what you typically see in a designer fragrance. So it's in the fourth spot. It does smell good. Uh, so check this one out guys again. It's from the house of Givenchy. This is gentleman society All right guys now coming in at the third spot now This fragrance is probably gonna surprise you because the fragrances from this house over the course of time Has not really gotten a lot of notoriety and it's gotten honestly in my opinion kind of a negative or bad rap uh, With a lot of the releases, but this fragrance actually comes from the house of Ralph Lauren man And I really really like this one. This is polo red parfum 
Polo Red Parfum. Now, it, it has, it, of course, it's a flanker. <laughs> of course, it's a flanker, but man, I really love the way that this thing smells. And that's something you're going to see with the top three uh, on this list. To me, um, they smell the best. At the end of the day, to me, these three smell the best. And uh, there's some other reasons that the top two are in the top two spots. But Polo Red Parfum, I really enjoy this one, man. I took a vacation with the fam, went into a Polo store, and I sprayed this on my hand, and immediately I said, bag it up. That's how I know when I really like a fragrance. Now, I've always been a fan of the Polo Red lineage of fragrances. They all have smelled really good. The original, they had that cranberry in there. Um, but the hit on Polo fragrances, of course, has always been the performance, and sometimes people will really use that word generic. You see that thrown around a lot with Polo fragrances, but I really like this one, man. It has a nice, fresh opening um, with this fragrance. It's really, really fresh, uh, the opening of it. You have some pink pepper in here, bergamot um, as well. Now, this does have some lavender in here as well. You have lavender, and of course, that blood orange is a star player in the opening, but when it dries down, you get lavender. You get very aromatic, kind of powdery. There's some orris in here. And when it dries down, man, it has some absinthe in here. And that's a note um, that you or have probably seen. Uh, Killian's Low Vert uses that note as well. It kind of gives a slight boozy accord to this fragrance as well. Man, this is really good. Seriously, for Polo, I'm really, really impressed with this fragrance, man. I've, I've worn it. I've worn it several times uh, on the vacation, uh, several days in a row. And that's, again, when I know that I really like a fragrance. Smells phenomenal. Seriously, you guys should check it out. And it performs pretty good. I got about six good hours out of it, which is not, of course, as typical with Polo fragrances. So, Polo, kudos, kudos on this fragrance right here. And in the dry down, guys, I forgot to mention this when it dries down. There's this sweet kind of resinous quality that's coming from Opopinax. This is good. Trust me on this one. Check it out from the house of Polo. Ralph Lauren, this is Polo Red Parfum. All right, guys, now coming in at the number two spot, this fragrance is from the house of Bulgari, and this is Bulgari Man Rain Essence. Bulgari Man Rain Essence. As I told you guys before, when I went into the store, this was one of the fragrances that were in my top two. When I just smelled it, I was like, wow, this smells good. I really want to have this or get this in my collection. That was my first impression when I first smelled this fragrance. And I'm so happy to have this in the collection. It's the perfect time of year for it. I think it's perfect for the spring and summer, especially the spring. It has this green tea, mandarin orange, and white lotus combination in the opening of this fragrance, which really gives this kind of calming, relaxing vibe when you wear this fragrance. Uh, it's almost like the name is indicative of uh, after the rain, what it feels like after it has rained outside. Uh, sometimes, you know, when it rains outside, it puts people in a relaxing mood. You know, you want to stay inside, really cozy. That's what this fragrance kind of gives me those those impressions and those vibes. That mandarin orange is really juicy um, and fresh in the opening of the fragrance. And then it dries down, man. It gets, you know, that traditional masculine feel from, from musk. This is a phenomenal fragrance, man. So you guys need to check this one out. Get your nose on it. I think it's one that you'll really enjoy. It's from the house of Bulgari. This is Bulgari Man Ring Essence. All right, guys, and coming in at the number one spot, the number one reason this made the number one spot because it's creative and it smells phenomenal. This is from the house of CH Man, Caroline Herrera. This is from the CH Man line, and this is called CH Passion. CH Passion. CH Passion, guys, this just smelled, this smells phenomenal. It really smells of high quality as well. Uh, some of the main notes you're gonna get in this, you're gonna get some iris in here. Uh, you're gonna get, uh, on the dry down of this fragrance, you're gonna get a little bit of an ambery feel uh, in this one as well. Uh, opens up really fresh. I love the opening uh, because I love Neroli. Uh, you get a nice dose of Neroli in this. There's some sandalwood as it dries down to give this creaminess as well. Guys, listen, this, is a dynamite designer fragrance. And I think it kind of caught people off guard because it came from the house of Carolina Herrera, uh, which again, I think their fragrances have been um, were pretty good. All the other releases, you know, the original CH Men, uh, CH Men Privé again. So it's not like they don't do good fragrances, but they haven't done something this good in a while. You know, so that's, that's the perspective that I'm coming from. But guys, this is really good. 
There's some tonka bean in here when it dries down so you get that sweetness, bourbon vanilla. This was a home run, all right? Not a lot of people have really talked about this one. This brand, this house doesn't get as much talk, obviously, as a YSL or, or a Dior. But man, quality fragrance, creative, really hit a home run with this one. So the number one designer fragrance so far, in my opinion, has been from the house of Carolina Herrera, and this one is called CH Passion. But that is it, guys. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, what are some other designer fragrances that have been released this year that you think are worth uh, the time or worth people picking up? I would love to hear from you guys down in the comment section. Now, as always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. I know you don't have to watch, but you do, man, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now don't forget, make sure you take a few moments out to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use this information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the bow tie fragrance guy. I love to look good. And of course, smelling amazing is my thing. So until next time, continue to look good, continue to smell even better. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.